When I was growing up in India, it was primarily a rural country. At the age of 11, my family started a shoe shop. Our family met every night to talk ideas. We earned the trust of the customers coming from the various villages. We had repeat customers, and to this day, their descendants come to my shop. My nephews today run that shop, and they now have two more shops in the same town. As I look back, having taught at Harvard, at Columbia, at Wharton, at Duke, at Northwestern, and having worked with some of the most famous CEOs in my life, I come to the real conclusion that I learn my first important lessons in business from that shoe shop. Those lessons are permanently etched in my DNA. I learned how important the simple concept of cash flow is. Without money coming in the door, we knew our business would fail. I discovered how keeping the cost of selling shoes low would yield higher profit margins. I saw that by moving the shoes out of the shop faster, with better velocity, more money could be made. I understood that by growing responsibly, both in size and market share, my family's shop could serve more customers with better care. In fact, we achieved dominant market share in two years. And knowing the customers inside out, what kind of shoes they liked, when they needed them, that knowledge is critical for any business owner. What are the building blocks of running a business successfully? Cash generation, profit margin, velocity, business growth, and customers. It doesn't matter if they are a for-profit business or not-for-profit, a government organization or a charity. Every leader needs to understand these building blocks. This seems like common sense, but common sense is very uncommon. Most business leaders forget how they make money. First, there is cash generation. If you don't have more cash coming in than cash going out, your business will fail. Cash can come from various kinds of sources, like customers and profit-making organizations, or donors and grants for charities, or tax collections for governments. Look at Amazon.com, one of the pioneers of internet-based retailing. When Amazon.com first started, it did not carry inventory that gave it a huge cash advantage over traditional booksellers, which had lots of books and lots of bookstores and warehouses. Amazon.com generated cash, which it used for marketing, generating even more cash. Then there is profit margin. Companies that do well always pay close attention to margins. Microsoft has nearly 90% gross margin. I like that kind of business. Even non-profit companies still have a type of money-making model. Take a museum, for example. Money rules every decision an organization like this makes. How many people they can serve, how many pieces of art they can buy or restore. What kind of exhibits they can host. Do they raise admission prices? Do they cut costs? But non-profits pay attention to these factors. As if they were a profit business, they can use the money they can make to further their social purpose. Good. Fourth is growth. You should pursue growth in ways that support your money-making model. Can you grow revenue without growing profit? Yes, but it drains the lifeblood out of your business. For example, there was an entrepreneur who built a business installing beverage equipment at restaurants. He borrowed money to make the installations. And the margin on the ingredients he sold was so slim that it didn't even cover the interest payments on the borrowed money. And yet he was obsessed with growth. He grew the business quickly, but soon the outflow of cash outpaced the inflow of cash into the business. And the company went bankrupt. Again, growth is as good as it's done profitably. Finally, you have to know the customer, not just the numbers. It is the customers who provide revenue, margins, cash, and growth. Leaders need to take a street vendor's approach. The street vendors are extremely well tuned to their customers for sheer survival. Simply by observing with a keen eye, their preferences change over time. No matter what your position is, you do affect your organization's money-making model. It's up to you whether you affect it positively or negatively. Think about it. Even a mailroom clerk helps improve cash flow by mailing the invoices on a Friday before the mail is taken away and not waiting to send them on Monday. 
Conversely, by opening incoming mail early and getting checks deposited quickly, the money is in the bank earning interest. What I have found working with great leaders, that they master the five building blocks. And they are comfortable answering these three questions. First, what is the money-making model of my organization? Second, how does my team contribute to the money-making model? Third, does everyone on my team know the answers to the first two questions? Do you want to be a great leader, effective leader? Then have that shopkeeper's mentality.